welcome to Backyard Professional Chess Videos. I have another really nice Paul Morphy game against Marion again, the guy that I videoed in the previous video, and this one is six years later. First, I'm going to have a quick bite of lunch. I'm just eating my hamburger without the bun because I don't need the carbs. I'm overweight. I'm trying to lose some weight, get back into shape, body, mind, spirit, you know. So I'll be back in just a minute to show you this magnificent Paul Morphy video. Very educational. I love video. I, I love games like this. Mmm, good hamburger. Okay, now that lunch is over, wanted to do a quick lunch. This game was played by Morphy and Marion six years after the previous video's game against Marion where, where oh, and Morphy gave him queen knight odds. The game before six years earlier, Marion had simply moved on the side, didn't contest the center at all, and the whole side was open and Morphy just waltzed all over him. Well, Marion has done his homework now, so now he's playing really quite good chess. Let's take a look. Morphy is the white pieces, and Marion is the black pieces. Bishop knight two, knight queen bishop three, already a marked difference. Marion is playing much better. Pawn king three, pawn queen four, possessing the center with pawns. Not a bad idea. You don't have to possess the center with the pawns these days. It's enough to try to control the center. He is possessing it, certainly. Much, much stronger game. The, uh, the idea is the central control, either through possession or through influence, is how modern chess is played today. But the idea of the center will never disappear out of chess. If you're not playing to struggle for the center, as Yusupov says, or to dominate the center, as Silman says, you're not playing chess right, right? So these two are going at it really quite well right now. And Morphy comes up with Bishop Knight 5, challenging the piece that is helping influence the center and giving support to the pawns. And he goes to bishop, queen, three. He just keeps bringing pieces out. This is good to see. This is very good to see. Pawn, king, bishop, four. Now, the possession of the center is, or can be, if you get a group of pawns that are mobile coming into you, that's dangerous. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to challenge the, that group of pawns, and so Morphy is very properly challenging the center pawn. Very good. Very good. And he develops his queen as well. Very nice. They both castle, giving them the option of connecting their rooks, which is also very nice. Really excellent play at this point. Marion has done the opening vastly superior to what he had done earlier in his chess career. And now, Morphy, pawn bishop four. There's an exclamation point here. Fundamentally so. He is going to try to wrest the central power away from him. Yeah? Because, let's face it, that is a forbidding center. Truly. That is something else. Had Marion done something like that, gained more central space, blocked off Morphe and all, just that one pawn move, this would have been a vastly different game. But he didn't. He left it here. And he went to pawn queen rook three. Challenging the bishop, the bishop in this situation, but of course, the bishop is going to take the knight, and the pawn will take the bishop. So, this changes the dynamic of the center. I just want you to realize that when you have two knights on each side, they influence the pawns on where and how they move. Now that the bishop has taken, and now uh, 
Marion has the bishop pair, and Morphy doesn't. He's just got the one knight, right? One knight and one bishop. This bishop is very finely fianchettoed across that central line, however, cutting the diagonal. So this will be a, uh, a really good game. Now, Morphy takes the king pawn. Notice that the knight Morphy just took was influencing that square. So when he exchanged his bishop for the knight, that opened up that square for a pawn attack without letting Marion post a knight in the center like that. Two knights in the center with pawns and a bishop and a queen would have been tremendous. So you can see the benefit of his exchange of that knight with the bishop, yeah. Like I said, it changes the dynamic of the central influence and the struggle for the center. Just something to keep in mind. And now, of course, the bishop takes the pawn, sure. Absolutely. We still have a very strong Marian center at this point in the game. Really a tremendous effort. Very, very nice to see this. Morphe is relentless at attacking the center, however. Really, and that is good chess. So the bishop bumps back, and now Morphe presses the pawn. Look at that beautiful, powerful central pawn chain. Gaining space on the queen side, cramping black, taking the bishop. The bishop has nowhere to go now. So what can Marion do? Marion, because he was so aggressive at uh, development in this game, he has a wonderful option. Look at what he does. Boom! Take the base pawn of that magnificent central pawn chain, and it saves his bishop. He puts the king in check, so now Morphy has to get out of check, so he puts the king to knight two. Very, very interesting. And then the bishop comes to king two. A great way to save your bishop, weaken Morphy's center, and take him off kilter, so to speak. Rook King 1, Marion has the initiative. Morphy is going to use the Rook on an open file to take the initiative back. That's critically interesting to see. Yeah, you can see them struggling back and forth mightily for the initiative. They want to play their game their way, yeah? Marion appears to be on a really strong attack right now. He's going to try everything he can to attack. However, his queen really is under duress right now because she can't just back up the file, the power of a rook on the file. So he has to dodge away somehow. But watch what Marion does to increase the power of his position. Rather than move his queen away out of the threat, he brings his knight into a much stronger position. Knight on the outpost, on the king's side, coupled with the queen. That's looking dangerous. Look at how clever this move is. If the rook takes the queen now, the knight will take the rook. If the rook takes the queen, the knight will take the rook, threaten the queen, and put the king in check. That would be a splendiferous knight fork, right? So, Morphy is not just waltzing over Marion in this game this time. Marion has developed his chess power over the course of six years, and that's what made this game so enjoyable for me because. Seeing how well Marion improved gives me hope that, hey, if he can do it, maybe there's a chance for me and for the rest of you. It really does improve through time. We just have to give it time. Morphy, of course, being who he is, bops the bishop down to here, threatening the queen. Now, now the queen has to move. Yeah. Yeah, that's too tough. Too tough, so he brings the queen over to c3. 
and now he's out of danger, right? No, because this is Morphe playing, and Morphe is seeking, ever seeking, to gain the initiative, so he won't play too passively. It's interesting to see the difference in this bishop position now, isn't it? He was here, but he's hitting granite. These pawns are locked, and so the influence is extremely limited. By bringing the bishop down, threatening the queen, bringing the bishop back up and threatening the queen, the bishop expands his influence, taking over the initiative, at the same time forcing the queen to move again. But look, it's not just a useless move. Marion is destroying Morphe's fantastic central pawn chain. This is really strong chess at this point. Even though his queen is getting threatened and getting run around, she is producing good results for Morian. Very cool to see that. Unfortunately, he leaves his rook, his bishop hanging, and the rook is on the open file, and so Paul Morphy uses the open file absolutely, and now... 7th rank, so early in the game, wow, <laughs> that, that is a tough romp, but watch, Marion takes the final part, completely decimates that magnificent central pawn chain and threatens the rook on the 7th rank, yeah, this is great chess. Not to be outdone, Morphy brings his queen to king two. Notice he doesn't just come over. He comes up just in case he needs to bring his other rook over into this game. Here on this aisle or here on this file. Hitting the pawn that's supporting the knight, etc. Yeah. So that's why he bumps it to here. Yeah. That's good chess. Marion, uh, pushes the pawn to queen five. Uh, I, I don't know what to think of that. I, I, you know, in a computer analysis, my bet is that this would not be a good move. And why do I say that? Let's take a look. Let's hold on and take a look for just a moment. You're doing so well at this point, but recognize you're only using two pieces. Morphe has one, two, three, four pieces. Granted, his knight's on the rim for a few moves, yes, but four to two can get very dominant, yeah? So, it appears to me, based on this uh, board position, yes, he has good central control, especially of e4, for sure. Uh, he's not utilizing e4 with anything. His, his knight outpost is on the king's side, which, and that can't be bad, but he really need. Morphe has a battery here, a queen back and a rook, right? It just seems to me uh, Marion needs to connect his rooks. Yeah. And, and yes, yeah. I mean, the bishop's bad. When your bishop's bad, your bishop's bad. Meaning the white bishop has pawns on the white squares. Everything's on the white squares. So Marion is actually having a dark square crisis. His dark squares are weak. Yeah, we can see that. Granted, that uh, isn't the best move, but it connects the rooks and it gives you a chance to get your rook over here and challenge the, the file. He's got a battery on this, and he's got an option of bringing a third one over. 
either here or here. Either one of those, those are extremely powerful rook moves. Based on this position, uh, you're sweating bullets if you see your opponent do that this early in the game, right? You can't let your opponent have this for free. Uh, you have to change down. Really. You've got to either take one pair of rooks off or both. You can't leave him like this. So, I mean, it, if you go here, of course, the rook will take. You can't do that. That won't work. But you've got to find a way to move the bishop to get the rooks in. Unfortunately, your, your bishop really doesn't have much of a uh, position to work with. But this, my bet is that a computer analysis would say that is really not the right move. I, I, just, I don't find that inspiring at all. I, I understand he's gaining space and all, but no. It, it, he's, he's blocking his own doubled pawns. And speaking of pawn structure, the, uh, yeah, the pawns on the queen side here of, of Marion are kind of rough. You've got doubled pawns here that aren't going anywhere. They're just sitting there. And then, although they are not blocking in the bishop, this one is at this point, but it's a single pawn, then double pawns, then a single pawn uh, in an end game. Morphe's pawns are connected. They're together even though he has less pawns by quite a bit. But I do like Morphe's position better here, and I really think Morian needs to challenge that file and at least swap one pair of rooks. I'm betting a computer analysis would, would say something similar to that. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, right? And uh, Morphe responds by once again... See, uh, Marion is gaining central space. Space is really important. It's one of the fundamental important imbalances in the Silman system. Well, Morphe is gaining more queenside space here. Challenging the queen. Again, running the queen around. He's chasing her all over. That helps prevent Marion from processing more of his pieces into this game. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good strategy. Queen comes to queen for check. And king bumps down to knight one out of check. And with this position being forced, having his queen forced over here, Marion has a great opportunity now there might be a couple of good options. Really, truly. Now, you really could put that bishop there. Yeah, couldn't you? Look, it would cover the e8 square to prevent something like that. Of course, he's not going to do that right now at this moment anyway. But with a third rook in here, that might be a good battery. Right? So it helps cover that square. It also connects the rooks so that you can get all of your players into the game and challenge that file. Really. In my opinion, that wouldn't be bad. Now, another option that you have at this point. I realize that Marion, Marion must feel... Uh, the knight's stopping here and here. Of course, and that's got a pawn anyway. The, the queen is taking away all of the diagonal. See, because of the way he opened, uh, he has weak white squares around his king. So, Marion is attacking those white squares, and he's possessing a white square. Uh, he probably feels like he's getting close to checkmate here. It could be real close and interesting and tight. So I can't blame him for wanting to maintain that kind of uh, pressure, but another option he has is put the, put the uh, knight to here. Because that also covers the square, and it, he's got this file. A lot of damage against a king can be done on that kind of a battery on a file. So those are two possible moves, the knight to here, or the bishop 
to here. This is clearly, in my opinion, a, a quite inferior move, but it does give you the option to get your other rook in. So, but why play it when that one would be real good? Yeah, right? This one, yeah, you have the queen support, but you just simply throw away your bishop. The rook will just take it. So that's a waste of time. This one, not bad. Not bad. Well, Marion does something clearly ridiculous. <laughs> he pushes the queen pawn. <laughs> and uh, he, he really, seriously, he really needs to bring his... Uh, he's done so well up to this point, right? He really has, but he's continuing to just be satisfied with just two of his pieces out and pawns, don't settle for that. Bring everything out, right? Really, bring everything out. Because now look at what Morphe does. Boom. Let me make sure I got this. Yeah, bishop, bishop three. Yeah, look at this. You've got the diagonal against the pawn, the rook to the pawn. I mean, you're setting up a windmill here, man. This is deadly. Because now the king has to go to here, and you can come over to here, put him in check. He moves back over to here, and then you can put him over to here, check again. And then he moves over to here, and you go right to there there and he's in check and you take the queen so this is a deadly move here and it was available because he pressed that silly pawn when he really can't afford and see and here i am ranting and raving about development right even this wouldn't have, this could have, see, he wouldn't have been able to do that had he left that pot alone and done that, right? But instead he pushed his pawn, and so he brought the, uh, he brought the bishop up, and now there's a deadly potential for a windmill, and that is a devastating tactic. You do not want to be caught in a windmill. Man, Really, truly, uh, if he was to do that, if he was to let, it's Marion's move, but if he did something silly, like take the queen, uh, Morphe could take a pawn. Well, Morphe could get a pawn, a pawn and a queen. Oh, he'd get more than that, because you go check and he bumps over. You got that pawn, then you got that pawn, and he's over here and you go check, so he has to move back. Then you go back and go check. So you've got two pawns. He can't take your queen yet. Then you come to here and go check again. He has to move. And then you take the queen. Then he takes your queen. And then you take the pawn. Yeah, I mean, man, that windmill can take out one, two, three pawns and a queen. And all he's going to get is a queen. In other words, Morphe will literally catch up on the pawns. That was a... That was an error <laughs> at best at best so now Marion is facing a potential windmill and this is ugly now he has to think now he has to realize oh crap wait a minute that was there I'm sorry I put that in the wrong spot He's on the battery. So now Marion has to, has to think hard. And what he does here is, where am I, Bishop, Bishop? Yeah, he puts the, uh, he puts the rook to here. I, I can't help it. I, I don't think that. Let's look at this for a minute. The problem with using that preventing the windmill is it gives the rook access to here, right? 
you get on the A-Track and it can get brutal really fast. Yeah. But that windmill is such a deadly, such a deadly tactic. What can you do? Um, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I know you want to, you want to have pressure on the White King, but I'm thinking that would be the safer way. One, you bring a defender closer to your king. Uh, this is powerful, man. We will see this. You cannot afford to ignore something like this when you have a battery involving a queen and a rook on a file, and you can't let him keep it. You have to put everything you have into making sure that doesn't fight against you. He's letting Morphe keep this. Uh, I personally like that move better for me. That's, you know, computer analysis. It probably proved me a dunderhead. It's done it before, right? But that's a better move. It, it, it compacts you a little more. You're really not going to get a lot. Uh, look, you can't, you can't go here to get the king in check to get him to move. Uh, you can't go here to put the king in check. You don't have a two-piece attack on a king just isn't enough. You know, you don't have enough oomph. So get, 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 you have to reset. You have to reorganize. In my opinion, that would be the move. We'll see. One of you do a computer analysis and show me what a moron I am. Show me how wrong I am. Anyway, yeah, uh, Morphe, when, when Marion did do this, uh, he's not going to take the rook because he's on the bat. Yeah, you can swap rooks, but that doesn't. So what? On the other hand, no, yeah, you can't. No, you don't want to swap rooks, so Morphe did go here. Yeah, he, check. Rook bishop one. Or, I mean, uh, rook king eight, check. And then the rook moves back. Now do you want to swap rooks? No. You own the battery. And that means you can either own the 8th rank or the 7th rank. You don't want to give that up just to take a rook. Yeah, the rook's guarding the king, that's true, but no. No, you want to keep this. And, and he'll show us why. So the much stronger move than swapping the rooks is get the queen into this. Oh, man. One move and it's curtains. It's checkmate. Yeah, because of that beautiful bishop. Now you can begin to see the power of the lines of the battery on the open file and the bishop across, the Fianchetto bishop across that angle. Holy cow. One more move and it's over. So Marion has to think through this. He has somehow been prevented or failed because of a couple of weak, silly pawn moves from getting all of the rest of his... This couldn't have happened even if his bishop had done that. That couldn't have happened. Can you see that? That's the importance of connecting rooks. But because he didn't do that, I mean, that certainly couldn't have happened had he put the bishop there. Yeah? So we're seeing the effects of not developing your whole army and making silly uh, pawn moves with only two pieces out attacking when your opponent has more pieces. Actually, he's, he's attacking with three. He's got the better position. But yeah, now, now you're in trouble. Now it's checkmate. So, of course, he is virtually forced to bring his queen back here. That is a tough row to hoe, baby. So, if you take the queen, the king will take the queen, and you can you can have him a queen to oh well, and then yeah, and then the rooks will exchange. So you can get rid of those four pieces, but why? <laughs> there really is something better. Really. And he finds it. 
Now it's time to bring the, yeah, there, for several moves, he's had that knight on that rim, that's true. But observe that he did not just leave it there. Now it becomes part of the arsenal. And a very effective part, because now you are forcing Marion to trade down. Now he must trade down. So the queen swap. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Queen takes the queen. Rook takes the queen. Now, now you really need to connect your rooks, dude. Now it's time. Now you can do this. He doesn't quite connect his rooks, but he recognizes there's still a windmill effect here. And so, yeah, take care of business first because that windmill could be absolutely deadly. Yeah. Oh, that windmill could kill you. At this point, if he did some kind of a ridiculous, if he did some kind of a ridiculous stupid move, let's explore this. What move am I, am I on? Rook just took the queen, and then he moved his knight to bishop three. At this point, if he did another silly move, and you had the windmill, you went check, then take the pawn, check. So he goes back, then check, then he goes back. Then you can go here and have a rook. And his other rook couldn't take you. Yeah, you could leave him completely decimated with that windmill. That's how powerful that windmill tactic is, man. Don't, don't ever underestimate that windmill tactic. Where was this pawn? Right there, I do believe. I hope, I hope. So, yeah, take care of things first. Eliminate this windmill potential. Fundamentally so. That makes sense that he did that. In the meantime, uh, because of Morphy's better development and able to threaten him with that windmill tactic, Marion still can't get his rooks connected. And, he, and his bishop is completely ineffective. Morphe's bishop is vastly superior. I mean, you can see that, right? And now, Marion's knight is strictly on defense while uh, Morphe's is on offense. And, of course, his rook is on defense while his rook is on offense. Morphe has not utilized a piece yet. So what the heck? What's wrong with the great Morphe? Why aren't you using your rook? Well, it's like he heard me from the future, and he said, you know what? I'm missing a rook. Double your rooks on the file, double your pleasure. Every piece, every piece in one of the most magnificent attacks, really, really solid, yeah? Pawn, queen, rook, four. He's going to challenge the pawn, and you're wondering, well, why, why this? I... He's trying to do a counterattack, is my suspicion. Right? Rook takes the bishop... Oh, this pawn was here. Sorry, it was here. Because he takes the bishop pawn. Boy, mind like a steel rusted trap, right? So he does get a pawn anyway, even though he's not in a windmill situation. It's a free pawn. And the rook comes to king one. He does have the knight covering him, so he is challenging the open file finely, but had he not done a couple of these weak moves, you'll notice another thing. This past pawn really doesn't, uh, I mean, there's no influence, there's no threat here. It's crazy. It's a past pawn, <laughs> but it carries no oomph. It has no backup support. Uh, and no way to to get in. Doggone it. Too many pawn moves, not enough peace moves. This is, this, this is a very good lesson for this particular situation. Morphe does not exchange the rooks here. Very interesting. He gives up that file and takes over this partial. Uh, it is a passed pawn, right? 
So that makes sense. You know, I said it wasn't very effective and all, but there's no reason to let it ever become effective. If you need to move your bishop somewhere else, then that pawn, yeah. So Morphe says, yeah, I have the file because really it's not going to do you any good. Why? I own your seventh rank. Owning your opponent's seventh rank forces a passivity to his rook or rooks. It forces them to stay home. That's giving you the initiative. The rooks don't want to stay home. They want to run up and down the highway and go visit the other king. They can't if you own the seventh rank. That is the power. You are seeing the power. So he gave up the file, but not the power in his game. Right? You see that? He still has plenty of power here. So that makes sense. Swapping the rooks at this point lessens the power of Morphe's attack. At least that's how I see it. Yeah? Boy, I'm blabbing like a bat out of heck. Sorry, but this is a really good game. It's really important to see this. Now look at this. Pawn takes pawn, threatening the bishop. And you go, well, now that's, uh, that is really interesting. Because the, uh, Yeah, what if, what if you can force this bishop back into passivity? Well, unfortunately, it's Paul Morphy. And Morphy sees an opportunity to take the knight. And what this does... Now, I just told you a second ago, Morphy did not want to change down. And yet, here we see him changing down. But look at the difference... He doesn't want to change down rooks, but a minor piece exchange with a piece that's guarding the king, that is a good exchange. That is a good exchange because it opens up the king to easier conquest. So that's a great exchange. That benefited Morphe. Yeah? Pawn takes the bishop. And now, this demonstrates how it benefited Morphe. Because now the king cover is out. It's gone. The king is in the wide open, and the power of the dominant seventh rank gives Morphe fabulous combination possibilities here. Really interesting potential checkmates. Really interesting. Well... I mean, you can see what's going to come, yeah? You put that there, and then you got the seventh rank, and you can really do some horrid damage. So, uh, Marion uh, lifts the rook to cover the pawn. Again, double pawns here. Uh, not the strongest set of pawns at all. He's trying his best, and now the rook takes the queen pawn. So he gave up a file, and he takes over another one. And he eliminates a past pawn that could be future potential if he somehow makes a mistake. Yeah. So good solid chess. Uh, the game is really, really pregnant with another very interesting possibility. And we'll see that coming about just shortly, except for one error. And, you know, the nice, really, he, he can't put the bishop there, and he can't put the bishop there. So he finally does develop the bishop, but to no effect, because that just gives Morphe pigs on the seventh, really seriously. Uh, the two rooks are called pigs on the seventh, and they just, they wipe you out. And you have a cooperating knight involved. 
there are checkmate possibilities everywhere here. Now it's close to the end of the game, but there's a small surprise that Morphe was cognizant of that we may not have been. And it's a really interesting situation. He goes to bishop c4. Covering his rook, you say? No. No, he's playing for an interesting trick. Now Morphy has to play extremely careful. Because if, well, let's say he was to do, he wants to get, he wants to, uh, obviously his target's this pawn. What if Morphy was to do this to give his knight support without letting it get taken, and then the, uh, the king can't hide off into the corner, right? If Morphy was to try to do that to get that knight to uh, checkmate the king, Marion has this. Whoa. Hold it. That's just one move away from checkmate. That's a... That is very remarkably interesting. So this game is nip and tuck. You want, you want to pay attention to your P's and Q's. If he does that and he did that, then doing that would be a complete mistake. Because now, well, he would have to move his king first. Well, maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's checkmate right there. So that's interesting. I'll have to play that out eventually. For now, there are threats everywhere that Morphe was seeing. And that's why he pushed the pawn to there. Because this apparently is going to prevent a checkmate. But we just saw that that doesn't prevent the checkmate. I'm playing this through wrong. You guys can look it out in detail. I'm trying to get the video made. I haven't looked at it on any kind of serious analysis yet. But there's something going on. Anyway, he took it pawn, pawn, on passant. So here he is with another pass pawn, but it's never going to make it in. It's just not going to make it in. Because now the rook does go to knight 7 check. And the king does go to rook 1. And now the knight goes to b8 instead of taking the pawn. It doesn't matter which... It doesn't matter what... Well, it does. If he takes it here, then he'll just take the pawn. Right? But by going to here, it was at that point that uh, Marion resigned. And you say, but, but whoa, what, what do you mean resigned? He's got the knight. Yeah, but the trouble is his own rook blocks him in. Check. And then mate. One move short. One move short of a checkmate. One or two. So this game never really got wildly out of hand and Morphy's opponent wiped completely out. No, he had definitely improved his game. So this was great to play through and learn. It was fun to see the difference a few years of study of chess can make in your playing. You'll notice, too, the game before and the video before uh, if I remember right, it was just like a 15-move checkmate. It was just boop, 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 done. This one took some time. This one was a much longer game for Morphe, a much more difficult game for Morphe, simply because Marion had learned how to become a good chess player using good principles for some of the game. Unfortunately, he really was outplayed. So anyway, there's your chesser sides. Hope you enjoyed this video. I am really enjoying Paul Morphy games. I'm uh, I'm on a Paul Morphy kick right now. I think I'll play five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them 
more this weekend, and uh, I, I may very well make several more videos of Morphe games. I mean, the Evergreen game of Anderson, and, I, and, and there's, there's a few of Morphe games that are overly popular, and they've been commented on and analyzed like crazy, but some of his lesser-known games, like this one, have fabulous lessons for us lesser mortals. It gives us hope. We really can climb this mountain of success in our chest, improve our chest strength. So anyway, thanks for watching my chest videos. Remember the day is young and so are we. Stay happy, and if you can't stay happy, try an interesting experiment. Smile at absolutely everybody, every day. And smile and mean it. I mean, really smile. Because in the worst case scenario, they might wonder what the heck you're up to. <laughs> and that can make it kind of fun. If you have people smiling back at you all the time, you can't be miserable, sad, and grumpy. So you begin the process and watch it transform your day. It's quite an experiment. I've done it thousands of times. It's fun. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.